In this video, I'm going to show you how quickly it is to get set up with the new Catalyst product from BigCommerce. What is Catalyst? Catalyst is a Next.js-based application. Um, think of it like a starting point for your next Headquest application. Much like Cornerstone is for Stencil, it's a base theme with lots of BigCommerce um, magic and functionality built in. That is the goal of, of um, Catalyst for BigCommerce so that you don't have to build everything from scratch. Um, not to get in the, into the weeds in kind of the, this video, but clearly one of the concerns around Headless is, yes, I get to um, choose and customize everything, but I get to choose and customize everything. The beauty of Headless is to get a lot of opinions baked in, a lot of functionality baked in, so you just get to use the latest and greatest in technology, um, and then you've got a working store out of the box. Let's show you what that looks like. Okay, we can start by going to catalyst.dev, uh, the homepage for the Catalyst project. Um, have a read around. Well, to get started, we're going to get the GitHub repo and follow the instructions. So the first step is to create your new project and follow the guided questions. Let's get going. Um, so let's name our project. Let's be Catalyst Demo and I want to connect it to my BigCommerce store. I can open this URL. Login. And I will choose my demo store and copy the code. Give it some permissions and I can return back to VS Code. Uh, now I have a choice whether or not to create a new channel. So I have just one channel out of the box. It's my stencil-based channel. Um, if you're doing this properly, then yes, I would recommend creating a new channel. But for now, let's um, just hit uh, carry on with our, our default channel. Now it's going to install some dependencies and do some project setup. This will take a little while. Okay, now we can see it's generating our GraphQL schema and validating the generated types from TypeScript. Okay, so that uh, has now completed. And our next step is to get started. So let's change into the project and run it. See, it's taking our .env.local file that it is generated as part of those question and answers, those prompts, and it's ready. So let's open the project. Okay, there we have our Catalyst-based storefront for Hyper. And um, we'll look very similar to the demo. We have our categories, have our products. And let's go back to uh, VS Code and let's open our project. Okay, so the end of the local. Here we have the environment variables that are generated by those, by those prompts. So connecting to your store, the channel, uh, and some API credentials. Other things to note, we're using AppRooter here. Um, and one of the first things to note that some functionality that is built in is in the with roots middleware. So as you all know with BigCommerce, you can have any URL you like. So there's no kind of prefix to say slash products and know everything underneath that is a product page. So that means for every page request, we need to know um, what we're looking at. Are we looking at a product? Are we looking at a category or brand, et cetera? And that's a middleware we have here, um, which will go through and um, find that out. So make a request to find out what kind of page it is, um, whether or not there's any redirects um, involved, um, and then we can cache that for next time round. And that's something that will, you'll see some references to key value store. So that's something that is, is highly cacheable, um, but does mean that um, it's something that needs to be done before a page could be rendered. The other thing that it does is you'll notice um, it's quite interesting that they have um, a postfix. So they'll add onto the um, the request a slash static if they know that we can render a static page. So if we go to uh, admin um, and then find uh, 
the product page. So we have our we have our product page here, um, but you'll see there's a slash static, so another version of it. Um, whereas normally the page is on the um, edge runtime. If you are hosting on Vercel, the slash static version of it is forcing it to be a statically rendered page. We know that we're always going to cache some HTML, uh, saying for 600 uh, seconds. Um, and render that instead. So when we know that we can provide a static page, we will do. Uh, and that's something that is managed in that with roots as well. Um, that is particularly important when it comes to setting up uh, Vercel, which I'm going to go to go into in, in the next video um, to make sure you've got the key value store um, set up so that information is cached um, and make sure that the page is as fast as possible. Um, and for that, that's as far as I'm going to go for, for this video. Um, hope that helps show you how quickly it is to, to get set up with a new Haskell's project.